badass bosses, devastating weapons, nine action-packed games. This is Metal Slugfest. How's it gaming? I'm Phil in the Blanks. Welcome back to Metal Slug Fest. This is 1993's In the Hunt, which you might have noticed is not a Metal Slug game, uh, but it is made by the Metal Slug team, which is uh, pretty, pretty much why I wanted to play it as like the last game for our Metal Slug Fest. Let's just get into it. Stage one, the South Pole. April 9th. 0093. I don't know. <laughs> this is in the future thing. Urgent command. Force your way into the DAS base immediately and destroy their system before it's too late. This was, uh, this is a submarine kind of spaceship shooter, uh, where, weirdly enough, it's not an auto scroller. You can move forward. You can't move back, but you basically, uh, control the speed of, of the level scrolling, like a kind of a regular platformer, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but you can tell right off the bat that, yeah, this is. What if Metal Slug was a submarine <laughs> side-scrolling game instead of a run-and-gun? So, uh, it is, it's really good. It's very uh, interesting. It's very difficult. Uh, but it's a very fun game where you have missiles, you have bombs, and you have like, torpedoes. Like, And in, the entire thing is underwater. You are a submarine. It's, it's just it's very, very neat. Uh, very, very, very cool. Very difficult. Like I said, it is a quarter-muncher, but... It's, ah, well, there's there's the first death already. I was gonna say I've been practicing somewhat. Uh, we're definitely not gonna go like do like three game overs for this one. Uh, there's still a lot of death to be had, but uh, this is one of the the games I, I started practicing because I was like I kind of want to do this for Metal Slug Fest because uh, I had just only discovered it like last year. So so what is it? Uh, this is in the hunt, made by uh, Iron or published by Iron, I guess. Made by the team that would later on leave Iron and create Nazca, which would create the first Metal Slug before they were bought out by SNK. So this is done by the same people, so that's why a lot of people are just like, oh, this is Metal Slug uh, Submarine, M Metal Slug Marine, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, and a lot of people get that mixed up because they think this is, this is like Metal Slug, but it's actually the opposite. Metal Slug is like in the hunt. There are uh, a few games made by that team uh, that were worth when, when they were with Irem. I forget the name of a bunch of them, but uh, they all kind of have that, that specific Metal Sluggy look to it. Smooth sprites, really well done explosions and, and splashes and stuff. Just This is the one I, I kind of really wanted to do. I, I learned about it because it launched for the... Um, uh, not the virtual console, but it was like randomly on like the PlayStation Network on sale. I was like, what is this? I looked it up. I was like, ooh. So I, I, wa I just wanted to try it. Uh, and it's it's pretty fun. I wouldn't say it, it's it's better than any of the Metal Slug games, but it is very unique. Uh, I don't think it did extremely well because I mean no one's no one's heard of this game. I mean maybe I'm just saying that because I never heard of this game, but it's not one I hear about a lot. Let's just be honest. And every time I see a video on it online, it's like oh it's like Metal Slug, completely negating the fact that it's before Metal Slug. And it's the same team and all that. But it is pretty fun. You can see there's a lot going on. It's, it's pretty impressive for 1993. Uh, the game also came out for PlayStation and the Sega Saturn, which makes sense. We are playing the actual arcade game. The actual arcade version has been released uh, on multiple platforms, um, on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox. I think it was also available for, like, maybe the Wii U's virtual console, I think, maybe. Um, it is available for the Switch as well, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I would, I'd be very surprised if they released this on... PS4, or like PlayStation and Xbox, but not the Switch. There's no reason for them not to. But, yeah, uh, it takes place in, in the same universe as a few other, other games. I guess the bad guys are the DAS, and it's like a post-apocalyptic world. And just, they're all, like, different. Like, a couple of them are running guns, some of them are, like, top-down. Uh, this one's a, a side-scrolling submarine game. It's just, it, it's cool, the idea that they were, like, they created this world, I guess, and each game is sort of different. Like, that's really unique. Hello, boss! Okay, yeah, big but like again, look how look how metal sluggy this thing is. It's just neat. They did a great job with it. It's it's one of those I wish they kind of made a second one. Ah, I just got ripped apart. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Let's get away from this thing's friggin' weird hook shots. But yeah, no, beautiful bosses. Very just very interesting. I like it a lot. Yeah. Careful. Your uh your slug or slug. Oh my gosh. Your submarine is very, very, very slow. At least in my opinion. I mean, 
for just basic maneuvering, it's not too bad, but for, for like, getting out of the way of some of these things, like, some of these bosses are fast. You're just like, doo doo doo, I'm a submarine. <laughs> not moving too fast. But I love the idea, like, you, you always get the spaceship shooters, or, like, the magical girls on broomstick shooters. Like, those those are all, like, cute em ups, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're very popular series or genre or whatever. But, like, a submarine one? This is neat. I want, I've always wanted to play Steel Diver on Nintendo 3DS. I've never played it. Like one of those random uh, franchises that Nintendo was like, look, we got uh, a franchise. And, like, no one cared. So, they're like, all right, never mind. We'll put a reference in Smash Brothers. <laughs> That'll be its life. It's like Ice Climbers. But yeah, each level is just a really unique idea. This is, like, the sunken city. Weirdly enough, uh, from what I've read online, the levels are in a different order in the Japanese, in European, and North America ones. Uh, I guess this is like level four in Japan, but it's level two for, for America. I don't know if that means they've toned down the difficulty of of this version, because like, I mean, you'd think level four would be harder than level two or whatever, so switching up the, the, um, the, the order would mess up with the difficulty. So I don't know if they changed anything, or maybe the reason why they, they changed the order is because the, the level, like, this wasn't considered very difficult for a level 4. Hit the rockets. If you hit the rockets at the butt, the little rocket base, it'll make them go faster. If you hit them near the top, it'll make them go slower. So you can kind of control this. It's very difficult. I'm actually surprised I made it out there alive. There's another part of the game that does this, and it's much, much more difficult. You get the highway collapsing. Again, very metal slug. You'll probably notice that when I go up to near the top, you can... Your missiles will actually breach the water, uh, or I guess breach the surface, um, and kind of attack. And there's a bunch of different damn, but different versions of, of that. There's like one that's a machine gun. Like this is my regular one right here. I like the enemy chasing homing torpedo or homing missiles, of course, because I mean, who wouldn't want that? And my torpedoes are normal, but sometimes you get like spread torpedoes or like concussion torpedoes. It's just ah, damn it, Phil, pay attention. Uh, but it's it's just. I don't know, I like the idea of this. It's really cool. I'm all about shooter-type games. I'm, I'm, I'm not great at them, um, as much as I do like playing the Toho games and uh, the Dodome Patch and, and all that stuff, Gradius. I, I've never been super, super great at them, but they, they're just always super fun. I'm just glad that they're arcade games, because ah, it means that I can just pump in a bajillion quarters. Oh my gosh. So much death. So much death. The game doesn't have um, the, like the total of continues you, you went through like the Metal Slug games do. I wish it did. I would love that. Um, but I know it's going to be pretty high. Probably not as high as um, Metal Slug 6 and, and Double X that we went through. Uh, this is like the first one I started practicing a little bit because I... Th this was like kind of the beginning of the whole idea for Metal Slug Fest. I've wanted to do the, the Metal Slug games for you guys for a long time. I mean, it's Metal Slug. I love Metal Slug. But when I, when I found this one out, I'm like, oh, this would be a really cool one to have like a as a special, like, a little extra at the end of, like, a, a marathon. Or at the beginning of a marathon, we're doing it, like, chrono chronological release order or something. Uh, but yeah, so so it's thanks to this game that I finally sat down and did all the Metal Slug games. This is a really cool boss. I love the background, the baseball stadium. That's really, really cool. They really get the whole sunken city down. Not, it's not just, oh, it's just buildings. No, the here's, like, a, it's a stadium. It, just, it looks really, really cool. Interesting looking boss. It reminds me of the two... Um, tanks from level 4 of Metal Slug 1. And I'm, I'm wondering if, if that's actually a reference to these guys. Because I just, I like the ideas. Blue and an orange one. Nice, nice color combination there. I like, blue and orange is a fun combination. It's like Blippi. <laughs> James is watching Blippi now. It's so funny, he'll get into like a, a cartoon or something. And he'll ask for it. And he's like, it's like, it's TV time, what do we want to watch? And it was for a while, it was like Ms. Rachel, and then it was like, oh, now it's Coco Melon, and now it's It's Blippy. And it changes like every week. So, I wonder what it'll be next week. We like Bluey. We like watching Bluey. I mean, every every parent likes Bluey at this point. Stage through the channel. Then it gives you a date. Not that it matters. The dates, uh, I guess it's always like the same month, but the days themselves are randomized, which I think is really cool. Um, but no. There are, there are worse things for my kid to watch. He's three and a half almost, so. Likes Paw Patrol, which I actually don't think is that bad. 
parents are all like, oh, these dirt kids shows. I'm like, I'm already a giant kid, so I actually don't, <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. My thing is just, is it acceptable for, for my son? That's all. Careful, careful. I really kind of want that upgrade. Yay! You got little balloons. <laughs> little balloons that go to the top. But it's for a nice machine gun, so. This is a cool level because you don't have a lot of room. Like, the first two levels, you have most of the room is, is water. This one, you're forced near the bottom. And I'm just like, it's, it's, considering what kind of weird limitations you'd have by making an underwater shooter, they thought of a lot of really cool ideas to make it so that that limitation of game design was fully explored. So I, I, I think that's really, really cool. Jeez, gigantic. I like how you can see, like, regular-sized um, buildings, too, and, and, um, like, there's a, I think it's an ox or a cow over there, a bull. Uh, and there's, there's some people every so often, too, so you get to see, like, an actual scale of size, which is something you don't get to see in a lot of spaceship shooters. It's just like, here's a spaceship. How big is it? Who, who knows? It doesn't matter. But here, oh, frick. But here you're getting to see a nice scale based on this city, and based on, like, normal size things. I don't know. I like that. That's pretty, pretty cool. I guess you could say, well, it's a submarine, and there's a helicopter up there, so it's pretty obvious. But I don't know. I like when it's very explicit on, on, on seeing those little details. So, inside the factory, I'm assuming to take out some sort of secret weapon of some, some sort. The bad guys have. Jeez, everything always like. Oh my gosh, you have so little room to move in this level, and that bridge protects the enemies. Like, they can shoot kind of through it, but you have to destroy the bridge to get to the enemies. It, it's it's interesting to have such a disadvantage. Here's the boss. Kind of sits there for a while, and it's like getting built. Which, again, is really, really cool. It's a really neat idea. But it is very dangerous. These things like to shoot little lasers. You can kind of... Every time you go past one, you're, like, taking a chance, you know? And they, they grow back. After a while, though, he will fall into the, into the water, which makes him even more dangerous, because you have even less room to move around. Ah, damn. Didn't yet, not, not that coming. Come on, fall, please. Soon. There we go. Get out of the way. First time I played, I thought he was dead. I was like, ha ah, and then he just crushed me. Ah, damn. So it's the same, same thing with the drill there. Getting past it's like, you can do it, because he's not always using it, but it's it's a crapshoot every single time. It's like, ooh, there we go. I'm gonna get some hits on him. Your missiles, or your, like, surface to air, I guess. Ah, damn. Really work well against this guy. I'm having so many deaths here. Just, yeah, just go nuts. You don't have any grenades the way you do with Metal Slug, so, like, there's not a sudden burst of power you can have, but still, I, I find your, um... Your surface-to-air missiles um, tend to be the most powerful thing you have. At least it feels that way. They're easier to hit because they, they, there's a lot of them going at once. Stage 4, the Deep Dark Sea. This is uh, to be expected. If I was if I was told, you have a submarine uh, spaceship shooter kind of shoot em up this is the type of level I would immediately think of. An undersea volcano. I just spoiled that. I just realized it. It's like, it's not called that. It's called the Deep Dark Sea. And <laughs> that goes into an undersea volcano. Oh, well, I mean, it's happening right now, so. But, like, this, this is this is the first type of level I would have thought of. I like the North Pole idea. That was really cool at the end of the Arctic. That's a really neat idea for our first level. There we go. It's already hell down here. Careful, careful, careful. I don't think these bubbles actually hurt you. I think they just kind of push you upwards. I, I still don't want to touch them, so. Move on. Move along, move along, like I know you do. Careful. There's so much in this level. Plus, a really difficult boss that looks insane. I've kind of have a strategy for it, kind of. But at least this way, yeah, you get some vertical... Ah, oh, damn you. Some vertical uh, area kind of submerging deep down, which is really, really neat. Careful here. Um, but here, it's the exact opposite of the last level, where you had very little room to move, and now you've got all the room you kind of want, other than the walls. Thankfully, this is not like Gradius, where hitting the wall will kill you. You can drive against the wall all you want. Thank goodness. Here's an insane area. I'm just gonna... I might just have to blast through here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Keep going. We're doing good. Oh, that actually... Yeah, that worked out pretty well. Little mini-boss here. He's cute. Ooh, look at that. He's like, yeah. Keep circle around you. Uh, you can kill this guy as much as you want. Every time you pass a volcano, another one will pop through. 
So I just killed him, and now we're gonna get another one like two seconds. There we go. It doesn't matter when you uh, that uh, you don't need to kill it yet until you come here, basically. But I think it's infinite until I actually go down to the, the end here. But he's very easy, as you can see. Come on, man. There we go. And now more insanity. Careful. Jeez. Careful. Jeez. Careful. Oh, damn. I thought I was going to make it. That's okay. Now we just got... I think these guys respawn infinitely, so you have to just make some headway. So just, just I guess, keep going. So if I just stand around here trying to kill them, they just keep coming. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. Still doing better than, what was it, like, four or five years ago when I played that, like... 1940 Dinosaur Island game where I, I just played that one pretty much blind, which was so dumb of me. I really should not be playing games blind. Oh my gosh! Okay, I forgot to go... What I'm supposed to do is go up here. You have this three-headed friggin' monster here, and the entire screen is deadly except for the top left. And the only thing you can do is kind of go in there and try to get a hit, a couple hits on one of the heads. And whenever the volcano kind of top right, right in front of me glows, like right now just move to the top it's gonna shoot one little volcanic rock and it's gonna hit you so this is the only way i know how to defeat this guy i've seen people online where they're actually dodging stuff i'm like that's how are you doing that so i'd much rather take it easy there is technically a timer but i mean i've got more than 81 seconds on there. each of those seconds i think like two seconds so yeah i'm gonna stay up here take out these guys Maybe when there's only one head left, I'll go down, but... Jeez, I'm not getting good. Ah, that's so much fire. I'm starting to get a little red. I'm starting to get a little red. Which is video game top four. It's weakening. Or just getting angry, I guess. But your your missiles are, are decently strong. Like, it's not like it takes a million shots. It's not like Metal Slug, where you have a pistol. Or something good. And if you have the pistol, bosses take forever. So I do like that. Ooh, now he's getting right red. Look at that. But yeah, it's very, um... It's very... It, again, it's made by Irem, so it reminds me a lot of R-Type, which makes sense. R-Type is a cool series. It's one I've never really gotten super into. Uh, but I remember getting into it in college, because for the PS2, they released um, R-Type Final, which was supposed to be the last R-Type game, and it was like a big, like, hurrah to the series. It was pretty cool. Oh, there he goes. Um... And I think that was like the last R-Type game for a long time. And then a couple years ago, they did R-Type Final 2, which is really funny when you think about it. Uh, and I, I've i heard that that game actually has an homage to this game. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like, one of the levels returns. Like, that's that's neat. R-Type is one of those um, I should play for the channel. I actually wanted to. Ooh, the Seabed Ruins. This is a really cool uh, level that's also a boss. There he is right there. So part of the boss is just getting away from the boss. Oh my gosh, he's, he's super neat looking. The face, like the two faces on the side of his face. Uh, anyways, our type. Um, a couple years ago, I actually I have a Turbo Graphics 16. It doesn't work properly, unfortunately. The uh, wiring for the controller port does not work properly, which sucks. Uh, I, not that I have a lot of games. I have like maybe six games for for my Turbo Graphics. Uh, but I wanted to do our type for you guys a couple years ago, and I ended up not being able to do it uh, because of that. But I mean, now like I'm I'm leaning a lot more heavily on emulation. Um, Thanks to the new computer, and um, I'm, I'm I'm dabbling in getting rid of a lot of the collection. Just, just I don't know. I've got two kids, bills to pay off. Uh, but because of that, it means I'm I'm pretty much free to play kind of whatever I want, really. Uh, so I should probably try out the R-Type games for you. There's there's quite a few of them, but I mean, I still have only done two of the Gradius games for you guys, and like this. Oh, oh damn. There's so much I want to play. You know what I mean? Like I. I do, I try to get an episode a day, and there's still only so much I can play for you guys. I'm just exploding like crazy. It was like a millionaire, and I'll, I could just put all my effort into this channel. Get two episodes a day, which is kind of overkill when you think about it, but yeah. Anyways, when you get to the top, use your missiles, your surface-to-air missiles, to knock down parts of the ceiling onto his head. This is really cool. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing at the first time I played this. I kind of tried to keep hitting his head. Nope, this is how you do it. And after a while, oh, just gross. You learn that it is not just like a titan rock monster, it is, oh damn you, uh, it is an actual living kind of flesh creature underneath that. It's so weird. That's one of the things you don't really see a lot in uh, Metal Slug. Like, there's gore in Metal Slug, and um, I guess Six had the invaders with like the uh, 
creepy brain guy, but you don't see a lot of, like, body horror in the Metal Slug games. I guess, I guess you do turn into a mummy and a, a zombie. Anyways, that, that's a pretty easy boss when you get down to it. That, that's the boss. But I love that. That's a, that's a really unique idea. Like I said, this, this game takes the whole submarine idea and, and squeezes it as much out of it as possible for, like, ideas. Anyways, last level, the enemy base. 20th of November. I think the game started in, like, April? Wow, like six, seven months out in sea. No thank you. <laughs> I'd never be able to be away from Kate for that long, or my boys. So this is a fairly difficult level. Somewhat lengthy, a very lengthy boss. Um, but it's, it's very much, it's like, kind of a... A mashup of a lot of like level one but harder, mixed in with a couple of things from the other levels too. That's pretty difficult. They throw a lot at you. Just take it easy. The fact that you can scroll the screen at your own leisure is is it's it's nice because that way you can you know take out an enemy, stop, take out an enemy. But there are a lot of places where I'm pretty sure there's infinite spawns of enemies. So. Oh no, oh these. Careful, careful so much on screen. But full full movement is always nice. You get a nice half ocean in this level. It's not like full movement like like like, like the last couple levels, but it's also not like ridiculously small amount of movement like level three. Careful. Definitely want to take this out. I don't want them to accidentally go off later on when I'm fighting enemies, so. Here we go. So here we have to take out this. I have no idea what this is. Upside down ball on a tower. I have no idea. Just take it out. Stand here and make sure these guys can't shoot. There we go. That'll create a bunch of water and now we can move more freely. And continue with the level. What a neat idea. Very neat. The enemies start coming so fast. So this thing actually underneath me, the Meyer never say die still. <laughs> okay. Uh, this That's actually the last boss. Unfortunately, even though it's right there and I can stand right here and shoot missiles and, and, and everything at it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything. Uh, you pretty much just need to keep going until it comes to life and then you start killing it then. Don't really understand why, but uh, it's one of those things I didn't really notice it until uh, my last playthrough of it. I was like, oh man, that's that's the last boss. It's just there. So I thought that was kind of neat. It's just, it, to me, for a lo for long as that, for, it just looks like terrain. You know what I mean? It's nothing special, it's just terrain. Oh my gosh, there's so much, a little bit of slow down there. Oh, friggin' hell. I didn't even see those guns. Yeah, just go. Just go. Here's the missile part I was talking about. This part is uh, fairly difficult because all the missiles are specifically set up to just be really really difficult to get through because your sub is just big enough that you can't really squeeze in oh my gosh i got guys over there being able to shoot through the missiles nope yeah see exactly it, it hits your tail you're done that's okay move on through with my invincibility oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> this is why you don't send me on actual uh submarine missions guys Jeez, jeez. Oh my gosh. Holy. There we go. We're, we're getting the pattern now. Yeah, look at that. That was pretty good. I feel like this is one of those games that like... Eh. Ooh, how about that? Um, I feel like I could get okay at this game if I had a lot more time. But, man, did the days start sneaking up on me. It's why um, 6 and double X were so poorly uh, run, I guess. Uh, I just started running out of time, and I was like, oh, man, I didn't plan this out very well, because I'm, I'm bad at planning. Oh, I should probably, you know what? I could have just ran through that. Maybe that would have helped. Oh, well, too late now. Try this out. See what we can do. Uh, okay. Slow you down. Maybe I can speed this guy up. Speed you up. Speed you up. Speed you up. Uh, no. Okay, you know what? Run! Run, 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 Nope, I'm not making this. Nope. Wow. That's a lot of, lot more missiles than I thought. All right, here we go. This is the last boss. All that, all those missiles just to get to here. It's a pretty neat looking boss, though. It's a lot of stages to it. I don't think I can hurt it right now. And that might be actually why 
I couldn't hurt it while it was um, just kind of laying there. So I think it needs to like open its parts. What does it say? Never say die still. I don't know what it says down there. Careful right here. Ooh, careful. Yeah, the idea of a gigantic base style boss like this where you, you maneuver around it is such a staple of our type It really is. Uh, I mean, a lot of spaceship shooters do it, but like, I've always noticed our type always has one. I mean, uh, hell, even in Rocket Knight Adventures that we did a long, long time ago, over 10 years ago now, <coughs> had that kind of idea. Okay, here we go. So, the best part is, is you can use your missiles. Oh, no, I can get so close. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, I can't believe I didn't die. Try to go underneath and, like, make sure your missiles go up there, because your missiles shoot pretty quickly if they go off screen. Right here, like this. Come on, come on. Yeah. There we go. Because you don't even need to take care of the top one. So that's one part. And then we just gotta, there we go. This one's pretty easy, because this is very bullet hell-like, but very simplistic bullet hell-like. This is just some basic weaving. This isn't too bad. The boss doesn't get really difficult at the very, very end. Then it's just bonkers. It's like, ah, I'm dead. There we go. I don't know if the pieces can hurt me, but I want to avoid them anyways. There we go, we got the same thing here, except it's just gigantic missiles. Just sit near the bottom and try to aim my missiles. There we go. Bop, 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 Satisfying. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, because look, look, that doesn't hurt me. And then another one of those bomby things, I think. Yeah, except I have a lot less room now. We're doing pretty good now, all of a sudden. But once the last form of the boss comes, it's going to be really difficult. The shots just come out really fast. I, I can't mentally do anything about it. I think that's it. Yeah, here we go. Like, it, it doesn't shoot... Like, it, it only shoots twice in a row. This is a lot for me, and it doesn't give you any room to be at the bottom. So my previous strategy of this does not work. This is a huge shame. Oh, now we're going to the bottom. Or, sorry, the, the front. And now we kind of can do that, but it's going to hit us with a lot of, uh... A lot of missiles, but... Same kind of thing applies... Damn it, Phil. Uh, is hit it with your uh, surface-to-air missiles. I'm just going to... Hang out right in front of it. Sniff my butt. Careful. Doesn't help that the missiles, if they make it past you, they come right back. There we go. All right. Well, now we're kind of taking this thing out. Jeez. Yeah. I. I don't. I cannot handle that thing. It's just I gotta take it out. Nope. Nope. I'm dead. Oh. Oh. Nope. Not yet. Come on. 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 Nope. I'm screwed. So many game overs. I'm. I'm well past like 13 or 14 now. I think. Oh, well. Tons of damage on you right now. Careful. This part's not too hard for me. <laughs> well, maybe I should stop talking about how, how easy parts are if I don't survive them. Jeez. Man, arcade games, though, eh? All about killing. All about taking your quarters. Yes, there we go. And that was in the hunt. Like a really, really fun game. It's just interesting to see a team leave one company to form their own company and then get up, get bought up by another company, but maintain like the same style. It's just cool to me like that. The DAS's plot to rule the world was completely destroyed. Yay! The funny thing is, is that so. That's the best ending. There are four endings of this game. And this ending was the uses at least, look at the little people, uses at least one continue. Uh, if you use at least one continue, this is the ending you get. You save the world. If The weird part is if you beat the game without a single continue, you die. Like the, the you, oh my gosh, people don't jump in the ocean like that. Um, it, it's like the bad ending, it's super weird. And then there's two two player endings. Because uh, at the end of the game, if you're two players, you actually have to fight each other like at the end of Double Dragon. And if you refuse to and you let the timer grow, you both sink and die. If one person defeats the other one, then that person takes over as the bad guy. I'm like, wow, so three of the four endings are, like, bad. One's really bad, because, I mean, it means that you, you try, try to take over the world. But and that's pretty neat. Anyways, yeah, that was in the hunt. And that was Metal Slug Fest. Thank you so much for indulging me, guys. This was nine games. 
that I just really wanted to play that I know that not everyone will be super into. Uh, but it was so much fun for me. I really, really had a good time playing all these crazy, difficult arcade games. And now that that's out of the way, time to do some stuff that is a lot easier for me to do now that Oliver is just about to be born. Might even be born by the time this is up. I don't think so quite yet, but almost. So anyways, I'm Phil the Blanks. See you next level. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to know when the next episode is up. If you want to support my channel, share some videos with some friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.